to come down to movement here from Ness, utilizing those, like, a lot of the orb bouncing. Let's I mean, see the other how he maneuvers around this uh, knight in the, the traditional combos we see uh, Zelda sort of pull out. Oh. Both players oh, yeah. sort of sizing each other up here. Wow, they are right at his shield and already at 47%. And we're seeing, one move we're seeing a lot of from uh, Zero to None is that up tilt, trying to anti-air pre take press. Like exclusively almost, I mean exclusively, but he's been getting Ooh, hit by a lot of... Ooh, tries to go deep there, Ooh. gotta be careful. Nice coming into play, good fair. <laughs> tries to read the forward roll. Oh, nice. cut up air. Tried to go for the elevator, but it did Ooh. not actually hit. Now, it is also worth noting, Ness is one of like the most... He is one of the scariest characters in the game so at kill scary. percent. He kills Absolutely. you in so many ways. His freaking F tilt kills. Oh, what was that? His throws, his, his back throws, forward throws. Nope. Nice night. And that's the ledge trapping we were talking about. That's exactly it's really it. Really hard for Ness to actually get off ledge. We'll see if there's uh, some proper adaptation. Or we can at least get the kill here. And that's uh, one thing I will say that uh, PK Chris has to stick to Zelda like White on Rice and really early on in those percentages so that you can rack that up. And nice job. Oh, does not kill. Oh, man. PK Chris really wish he had the rage from before. Good stuff. Nice. That, that back throw. So deadly. Special out of shield. Nope, not going to be. No double dash attacks there. There's that orb. There's the like aggressive getting off ledge, which is, you know, when it works, it's good, but that often requires burning a double jump in order to get back. And if Zero to None reads that, that means you're Ness off stage without a jump, and that's a miserable thing to be. Zero to None doing such a good job with those bears out of shield. Multiple times he he's been landing them all through this match so far. Good parry into the dash attack. One thing that we, do, we are seeing, Zero Denon doing a good job covering that the ground, sort of pressuring uh, PK Chris to make a decision to either jump, move around, and then trying to capitalize off his options. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of jumping from PK Chris, and I feel like Zelda doesn't necessarily have the cleanest answer to that. Like, mm. you see, a lot of what Zero Denon's doing is he's running up and shielding. Oh, Ooh, not actually hitting. It. Yeah, good DI. Good DI there for him. He was able to dodge that. Oh, I like this. Bang. Okay, now we're seeing sort of the strategy from PK Chris come together. A lot of it has to do with baiting. You know, that especially that's when right, Zero that's right. Yeah. Like, he'll, he'll do these cheeky movements. I don't know if that's going to kill. Yep, good DI is going to keep him alive. Good recovery there by uh, Zero to None. Tries to oh, put no in pressure with Oh, no Oh, okay, that was almost so cool. <laughs> Just because he knew, like, he knew that Zero to None is going to be spamming roll to get back. And he was right there for it, but he just didn't get the uh, didn't get the follow up. I think both players are at no. Well, I think zero to none is at kill percentage at this point against this nest. Got to be careful. There's a PK fire. Nope. Good job with the reflect. Oof. Let's see here. Trap the ledge once Ooh, more. Trying to go for the spike. This is where PK Chris died before, and again, this that's where he's Exactly what sealed. we've been saying is that ledge guarding is going to come in so clutch for Zero to None, as we can see here. Oh, that should be dead. Yep. Okay, but things are being traded right back and forth. All right, we're pretty much evened up here. And I will say one thing, the stage positioning has mattered so much. Oh, what a PK flash! That was the clutchest PK flash I've seen in a while. Oh my god, that took so much damage! Oh my god, already at 68%, and now we're seeing some pressure there on ledge. Exactly where Zero to None wants him. Yeah, you see that again, throwing out this phantom. The phantom basically forces PK Chris to respect it, and then just takes all the space and shields. There's that bear. What Chris is gonna do. That very, very powerful throw that Zero to None's been landing the entire match. Ooh, no jump. The damage. No jump, boys. That what is happening? 
That was a completely calculated. Yeah. Saw that he so went down great. too low. What's the best way to deal with him? Is once he had gone out of the down air range, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna eat the hit. Eat the hit. Why not? And there it is. Very smart. Good option there. And now we are seeing PK Chris now with the win. 1-0. We're going into the second match. All right, let's see what zero to none, what he does to adapt. Ooh. <laughs> Bear out of shield. All right, now we're seeing the movement from PK Chris come back online. It felt like that's how he started game one as well, but kind of fell apart once he got pushed into the corner because a lot of movement in this game requires you to have space at your back. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, just wasn't letting him happen. That's a, that's a good point. I think he's finally finding his footing here. He is moving a lot more confidently. You can see that. That's because he's had stage control. Very continuous. Like right now, now that he's uh, in the corner here, how to get back down, the movement just suffers because there's only so many things you can do. Good option there to grab into the back throw. Does not kill. Good DI there. Okay, Gets in there, and that's gonna do it. I think that was some suspect DI from Zero to None right there, I agree. but probably he was, he was on death's door anyway. Oh, there finally lands. I think that's like oh, one of the oh. first PK fire that he lands. <sighs> he tried to go for the tries to go for stool. it. Okay, now we're seeing some cool movement. Recognizing that Zelda's hitboxes are big but particular. And if you're able to stay out of where, you know, the full air where the up air is going to be, then you can dodge pretty much the worst of it. Ooh. Did he hold down there? I, I think he held it. down just That's a little bit. It was. Good Nair out of shield. There's an trying to recover back onto stage. Tries to get a fair and a good Nair right out of shield there by PK Chris. The yo-yo misses. No, it just clanked. Did it just clank with the uh, up B? Is that a thing that happens? Not sure. Oh, night. Ooh. I see what he was trying to do. He was trying to get Knight to hit, push him out slightly, and then try to go for the spike, and, but unfortunately, nobody was home. Oh, Nehru's love is going to be killing? I mean, okay. All right. He was far off of the stage. I guess that he was able to connect, and good job. Tries yeah. to go for another down air combo, and then not going to complete it. Oh, There's hold the PK on. fire, but the reflect That's there. The, the, That's the, 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 those are the situations where PK Chris normally loves to just go in, in the bear. That, that's going to be do it. Yeah. That's it. Good stuff to PK Chris Good taking stuff. game two. PK but um, Chris. one thing also is that normally, the way PK Chris plays, he loves to apply shield pressure. He has all these like tricky, sneaky ways of just like really hammering away at the opponent's shield. He's doing almost none of that because Zelda's out of shield options. Things like maybe as well, out of shield. Right. I'll be out of shield. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He can't play. He can't play it that exactly. way. Exactly. The right. tiny little windows. Like Nehru's love hits front and behind, so you're right. not gonna be crossing that up. So yeah, that's why another reason why PK Chris is, seems to be giving space. Okay, guys, here we go. We are in Pokemon Stadium. Who's got the advantage on this stage, man? Um, so the big thing is there is more room. And I feel like in that last, I, I honestly think it might be okay for PK Chris just because that'll give him more room to freely move around. Right, right. Uh, at the same time, I don't know. It felt like in that last game, just with that shorter stage, it really, ooh, okay. Uh, it really did feel like whoever was trapped in the corner was having a rough time. And there's just less corner. Right. And you also, know. now that you have that more room, as you as you were talking about it, Knight, it's really, it's not that it's not going to do its thing, but now you, you're allowing PK Chris to be able to have more space to kind of hold off yeah. exactly like you see there, play much more patiently. However, it is worth noting that you cannot retreat to the platforms easily because normally the Zelda space the, the Phantom so that they are going to be with the upward slice hitting on those platforms. Very nice job you're seeing PK Chris, but the movement does not get it. Oh, that's the up B is honestly kind of a cool out of shield option just because oftentimes if you're the Zelda, you can react to whether or not you've confirmed with the opponent and oh that bear God. is so critical and very nice job by PK is DIing and he goes like tries to go for the spike again. Then there's so many things going on, I don't even know what I want to talk about. Just like 
really cheeky things like the way that the Din Spire is being thrown out at the exact moment that a Phantom will fall up so that if he tries to suck it in like that, he's going to get hit by the Phantom right now. Unbelievable. Oh Good God. option there by Zero to None to throw out that Knight as he tried to return back onto stage. Now we're seeing good pressure. And Zero to None just being able to cover so much ground there with Knight. Making the entire ground a pretty much a danger zone with his projectiles and then his movement as he approaches PK Chris. We're seeing a lot more patience here. Does not want to start getting tossed back into the corner. Okay, let's see what he can actually do with it. Can he close out the stock? Good yo yo. That. that was nicely, nicely placed. He, the way that he was shielding in front of him, I feel like that really faked out the grab. That's why he spot dodged, that's why he got caught it. Good job, and again, Zero to None had so much things in his arsenal to be able to recover back onto stage, and now taking advantage, maintaining that advantage state. The win box. I will say, I feel like Ooh. PK Chris And you're seeing that patience there. Yeah. PK Chris slowly repositioning himself before making a decision. Interesting. Oh, I think oh. Oh, there might have been, I don't know, but there might have been some Giga Brain stuff with that last, uh, with that last. <laughs> It was a moment I, he just stopped I, right I, in his I, tracks and was no, like, no, I think what am I doing? I, I <laughs> legitimately think he might have forward smashed at mm. the long range so that then he wouldn't end up in the lag of hitting it and therefore he would have time in, in time to shield so that he wouldn't get back there and he would shield it. I think that's what he tried to Good do. Good call out. Good call out for uh, sure. <laughs> maybe. Or he just misspaced it. Ooh. And again, if Knight's not going to hit you or if you're going to do a neutral get up, he, she's going to come running at you. Oh. Some sort of grab and that's going to be a miss. Oh, it just it just barely oh, touched barely. the ground. That would have been a kill. That, that would have been definitely would have been a kill. It would have been so much momentum from PK Chris. As it stands, he's on the back foot, both you know, with, with the grand scheme of the game and for a lot of the game, literally, he's just been trapped in the corner here. And nice job of Zero to None, sort of increasing this deficit for PK Chris. He's still he's on his last stock there in 112. He's got to close this out very quickly, or else that damage is going to start racking up. And again, he's playing very patient. He's on his last stock, but he's got to close it out. Yeah, I, I do love the patience, though. But also, zero to none recognizing if he needs to, he can time him out. That's right. He Why doesn't not? really have to act as much here. He's he never has. to kind of distance himself, utilize that night to drain out the time. Ooh. <gasps> Both players putting their each other in a very vulnerable state there in that last part. Back onto stage, nice. Ooh, the shield pole. The shield pole, he waited that shield to slightly get down, and there was the reflect. But we're seeing really good defensive play from PK Chris. Both these players, but PK Chris has been doing a good job of just not overextending into anything that uh, Zutanon has been trying to do. Good Nair, oh! and that's why how you get rewarded for your patience, good sir. That was uh, beautifully it, that done. That was aggression, though. He went up and shielded. It was actually the It was actually box. the right time. It was the right yes, time yes. to pull out that aggression. It was very well timed there by PK yeah. Chris. But now 83%. And he does, you know, he's trying to have that same sort of patient approach, but the nature of the game has changed. He no longer has to look for the kill move. He just has to look for anything that can get him an opening, which for Ness is a lot more flexible, There's like the right opening. there. <gasps> just barely in the space. Now we're seeing both players now. Sizing each other, we're trying to be patient on both ends. And as you can see, Zero to doing a good job of maneuvering around that movement that Ness does so well. Good dash attack, just getting damage in. Ooh. But not able to find these follow-ups. Here at his shield has been coming so clutch there for Zero to None, and that's going to